Hey guys, the objective for this video is to do a clay example and to find the effect of stress. Okay, so the reason a clay is different to a sand is because if we have the water table here, not only is everything below becoming saturated, but actually everything above is saturated as well. And this is caused by something called the capillary effect. I'm not going to explain it here, you can go Google it if you like, but it actually forces everything above the water table to be saturated. Now, just a quick note, just on convention, because we essentially define everything below the water table as positive, we need to then define everything above the water table as negative. So you'll see where that'll come into play, but it's just important we make that distinction. So, let's find the, poor, the effective stress at A. I mean, at A, not X, at A. Okay, so, at A, the total stress will equal the depth, so 2 times um, gamma sat, and gamma sat we've been given is 19.7, so we get 2 by 19.7 is 39.4 kPa, and now the pore water pressure, because our convention is now we're going up from the water table, normally we go down so we do it becomes positive, but because we're going up from the water table it's actually negative. Okay, and we're going up to a point two meters below the surface. So in other words, and because this depth is five meters, we're going up three meters. Okay, so the pore water pressure will be minus three by 9.81. Okay, which is minus 29.4 kPa, which means that our effective stress, sigma V minus the pore water pressure, Okay, which is going to be 34.9 minus minus 29.4. So that's going to turn into a plus. So it's 34.9 plus 29.4. We get 64.3 kPa. Okay, so it's very important we realize that when we're above the water table in a clay, this becomes negative and we're going, it's the distance from the water table to our point is negative, which actually makes the effective stress increase. Okay? So that's at point A. Let's do point B.